Semiconductors are further divided into intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors depending on their structure, properties, etc. Intrinsic semiconductors. Do we know what intrinsic means? It means in its purest form. Therefore, these type of semiconductors are in their purest form by the nature of their existence. The common semiconductors used are silicon and germanium and they have four valence electrons orbiting in its outermost shell. We can further understand the motion of these electrons by looking at the structure of its atom. However, the atom needs a total of eight electrons in its outer shell to become stable. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now let's see how the semiconductor atom acquires the additional four electrons and becomes stable. Let's first look at this process with the help of one atom. This atom already has its four valence electrons and requires an additional four to become stable, which it shares with its neighboring atom so that every silicon atom has eight electrons in its outermost shell. Here millions of silicon atoms are bonded together and they form a semiconductor structure which looks like this. All these atoms set up a bond with each other, which is called as a covalent bond. However, these bonds are so strong that the electron fails to break the bond at zero Kelvin. But as the temperature increases, the electron absorbs the heat energy and it is able to break the bond. Once the bond is broken, the electron becomes free to carry the current. We get a deficiency of an electron in the structure. Hence, there is an empty space formed which can also refer to as a hole. Therefore, we consider holes to be positively charged. Electron here is negative and the empty space or hole is positive. Therefore, the immediate neighboring electron gets attracted towards this hole and fills its place, thus creating another empty space or hole. At its previous position, the process will continue in the entire structure in a random manner. So let's understand the second type of semiconductors, which are extrinsic semiconductors. How are they different from the intrinsic semiconductors? While intrinsic are the pure form of semiconductors, impurities need to be added to the intrinsic to improve their conductivity. And these semiconductors with impurities are called as extrinsic semiconductors. Extrinsic semiconductors subdivided into p-type or trivalent and n-type or pentavalent. As we can see, we have three electrons orbiting in the outermost shell of the atom. It is called as trivalent. And in the other atom, we have five electrons orbiting, hence it is called as pentavalent. The common examples of trivalent are boron, gallium and indium. And that of pentavalent are phosphorus, arsenic and antimony. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. The process of adding these impurities to the intrinsic semiconductors is called as doping and the impurities that improve the conductivity of these semiconductors are called as dopants. In case of trivalent, three electrons of boron will form three bonds with silicon and in the fourth bond of silicon there will be one empty space or hole and as seen previously, the immediate neighboring electron will be attracted towards the hole thus creating another empty space in its previous location. Simultaneously, the electrons of the silicon atoms attain thermal energy and keep breaking the covalent bonds at room temperature, thus creating further free electrons and this movement will go on in the same manner. Therefore, the number of holes generated in this structure dominate over the electrons. Hence, this structure is called as a p-type semiconductor. Now let's look at the second type of extrinsic semiconductor, the n-type or pentavalent semiconductor. In this, the atomic structure of the n-type or pentavalent semiconductor will have five electrons in the outermost shell. As silicon requires only four additional electrons to attain stability, in pentavalent atom, we have one extra electron electron. So we get a net negative charge due to this extra electron. Hence, its name is n-type semiconductor. Common examples of n-type or pentavalent impurities are phosphorus, arsenic and antimony. When we add pentavalent impurities to an intrinsic semiconductor, we observe that the phosphorus atom forms four bonds with four silicon atoms, fulfilling the needs of silicon. 
but even after that there remains one electron which does not form any bond and remains free and so unlike the previous structures here we get free electron readily available for conduction this electron rotates randomly around the phosphorus atom following a circular motion in addition to this the breaking of bonds as seen in the interactors happens here as well